Hi, this is question 9 from the AQA Mechanics 2 June 2015 exam paper. In this question we have a uniform rod PQ of length 2A that rests with one end P on a rough horizontal ground and at point T resting on a rough fixed prism of semicircular cross section which has a radius of A. The rod is in a vertical plane which is parallel to the prism's cross section and we've got the coefficient of friction of both P and T is mu so we have a common coefficient of restitution between um, these two surfaces and these two surfaces. The rod is on the point of slipping when it's inclined at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal and we need to use this um, information to find the value of mu. Now this, this is a classic question in Mechanics 2. Um, another variation of this is when we have a ladder against a wall. And always with these questions, what we're aiming to do is we're aiming to um, resolve in two perpendicular directions. So in this case it may be that we resolve horizontally and we resolve vertically. And then we're also taking moments about a particular point as well. So in this particular um, situation, it may be that we're taking moments about P, but we can take moments about um, any point. We'll talk about that in a second. So, so th those are the three things that we're actually doing. And then w we're going to combine this information in some way um, to work out any unknown, which in this case is, is the coefficient of friction that's unknown. So in order to work out our forces, we need to mark them on. But in order to work out our moments, we're going to need, because we're taking moments about P, we're going to need some information about our perpendicular distances to our forces. So um, if I start by marking on the forces, and then we can work out what the perpendicular distances um, actually are. So I'm going to have my m mass which I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to have my weight, which I'm going to mark over here. So we'll call that mg. And I'm going to have a reaction force here that's going to be perpendicular to this surface. So I'm going to mark that on here. So we've got a reaction force just there, which we'll call R. And over here, I'm also going to have, because it's a rough um, ground, rough horizontal ground, I'm going to have a friction force. Now, the friction force is going to be stopping the um, rod from, from going that way. So the friction force is going to be acting in this direction here. Okay, and we'll label that as mu r. Okay, so I've also got a reaction force here, and that's going to be perpendicular to the rod. So that's a point of surface, it's going to be perpendicular to this rod here. So I'm going to mark a reaction force here. And we'll call that S. And again, we've got a, um, a rough fixed prism, and we're told that the coefficient of um, friction is going to be the same in both of these. So we can say in this direction here, because if it was slipping, it's going to go slip that way. So our friction must be acting in the opposite direction to that. And we can call this mu s, and that's going to be our frictional force. Now I can say that this is equal to mu r and this is equal to mu s because uh, it's at the point of slipping. Okay, right, so those are all of the forces that are going to be acting. So we can get on with resolving the forces, but before we do that, I'm just going to mark on some distances that we're going to need for when we take moments about P. Now, the reason why we're choosing moments about P is because it means that I can ignore um, both of these here. It may be that I take moments about um, T. I, I could do that if I wanted to as well, but we'll take moments about P so I can ig ignore these here. I need to know the perpendicular distance to my weight. So the perpendicular distance to my weight, um, well, 
this whole length is to A and because it's a uniform rod that means that this must be at the halfway point so this distance here is going to be A. Okay, now we also need to know the distance from P to T. Now to work out PT we know that this angle here is 30 degrees and I also know that this opposite side here is A. So I need to know in this right angle triangle, I know it's a right angle triangle here because um, the rod is going to be a tangent to the circle so it must be perpendicular to the radius so I know this is the right angle triangle so um, I know that my opposite side sorry my adjacent side is what I'm trying to find and I know my opposite so I'm going to use tan so let's I'll use a different color here so we're going this distance across here to here and that's actually going to be a over tan 30 so a over tan 30 is that distance now tan 30 is 1 over root 3 so we've got a over 1 over root 3 which is just going to be root 3a so I'm going to replace that actually with root 3a okay so that's going to be that distance there now we should have all the information that we need now to solve this problem. So I'm just going to highlight again that whenever we're dealing with a situation like this, we're always going to be resolving our forces in two perpendicular directions. I've chosen horizontal and vertical, and it seems convenient here because I have two vertical forces and I've got one horizontal force. So there's less um, worry about the angles here if I just resolve it horizontally and vertically. Um, and then we're always taking moments about one of the points. And again, moments about P just seems like a sensible thing to do. So let's th start by resolving um, horizontally. Right, so if I'm resolving horizontally, I've got this force here, mu r. This is an equilibrium, so any forces going this direction are going to be equal to forces going that direction. So I've got mu r. And these are perpendicular to the horizontal, so I can ignore the R and the MG here. But we've got this mu S over here, and some of that's acting horizontally. So if I just drop a quick line here so we can see clearly what's going on. So a pink line here. Okay, so the angle made over here is going to be the same as the angle here. So that's going to be 30 degrees. So this is going to be mu S and cos 30 degrees that's the adjacent to the force so plus mu s um, and that's going to be cos 30 degrees okay and then we have got so that's two forces that did in the um, this positive direction so in the negative direction so that's going to be equal to and we've got some of this force here that's acting in the negative direction. So if this angle here is going to be 30 degrees, so I'll drop another line. Okay, so this angle here is going to be 30 degrees and we're going to have this um, direction that we need. So it's going to be um, S sine 30. Okay, so um, mu r plus mu s cos 30 is equal to s sine 30 degrees. Now I'm going to tidy this up a little bit because I know that cos 30 is root 3 over 2 and sine 30 is a half. So I'm going to double everything as well at the same time. So bear with me. Okay, I won't do that. Let's say mu r plus um, mu s root 3 over 2 is equal to and that's going to be half of s so that's going to be s over 2 and if I just multiply through by 2 
that's going to make that two mu r and I'm cheating a little bit here is going to be equal to that there okay so s is going to be equal to two mu r plus mu s root three okay and I'll leave that I'll leave that as it is for the time being but we'll come back to um, working with that again in a second so now I'm going to resolve it vertically so let's just change colors over here so resolving vertically and we have got well we've got the reaction force that's going up we've also got some of this force here that's going up and we've got some of this force here that's going up as well so I've got R plus and I've got S and that's going to be S cos 30 and I've also got mu s and that's going to be sine 30 and and that's going to be equal to the downwards downward force the only force acting downwards is going to be mg so that's going to be equal to mg so we've got r plus s cos 30 degrees plus um, mu s sine 30 degrees okay so now I'm just going to simplify this so um, that's going to be root 3 over 2 and that's going to be a half um, and then I'm going to double everything so I'll do that all that in one go so we should end up with 2r plus um, root 3 over 2 times 2 is going to be root 3s plus a half of mu s times 2 which is just going to be mu s is equal to 2 m g okay i advise that you show these steps in between i'm i'm just doing this because i'm going to run out of room okay so um so that's another equation um that we've got there and again um we'll, we'll come back to the, that in a second now our last thing that we're going to do is we're going to take moments about um p so let's just use a different color for that so moments about p and we can ignore the r and the mu r and we can also ignore the mu s because that's acting in the direction um, of the rod itself so we're only considering this mg here and this s so for the mg i've got the distance a so that's going clockwise so i've got in my clockwise direction I've got the distance A and then I've got mg cos 30 and that's going to be equal to and our distance over here is going to be root 3A and then I'm going to times that by S so I've got root 3a times by s. Okay, and then you can see that the a's will cancel each other out. And cos 30 is root 3 over 2. So we can lose the a's and I've got mg root 3 over 2 is equal to root 3s. And the root 3's will also cancel each other out. So I've actually got mg over 2. Um, so get rid of those we've got mg over 2 is equal to s or um, mg is equal to 2s okay so I'm just going to write down mg is equal to 2s okay so um, so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to um, try and put these equations together. So I'm going to start by making R the subject of this equation over here. So um, if I subtract mu s root 3 from both sides here, and then I can um, divide by 2 mu, and that will give me R. So I've got um, R is going to be equal to s take away mu s 
root 3 divided by um, 2 mu. Okay, so I can now substitute this into this equation over here. So I now know that r is equal to that, so I can replace this, sorry, this r over here with that there. So if I do that, I'll do that in red. So I've got two r, so instead of that, I'm going to have two times this, um, and the twos will cancel each other out, so I'm going to have s take away mu s root 3 over mu okay plus root 3 s um, plus mu s is equal to 2 um, g now from here I know that mg is worth 2 s so I'm going to replace this mg with 2 s so that's going to become 4s. So let's get rid of that. And instead we'll have 4s. Okay, and then what you'll notice here is that we've got an s term in everything. Um, so all of my s's will cancel each other out. There's an s term in both terms of my numerator here. So that I'll cancel an s there, an s there, an s there. Um, so that means that I'm going to have... 1 take away mu um, so if 1 take away root 3 mu I'll call that um, divided by mu plus root 3 plus mu is equal to 4 if I now multiply through by mu I've got 1 take away root 3 mu plus root 3 mu plus mu squared is equal to 4 mu and if I simplify this over here these two are going to cancel each other out so I'm going to have um, and I'm just going to come over here so this equation, I'm going to come over here, and we've got 1, so we've got mu squared take away 4 mu plus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, now I've got everything in terms of mu, so we've now got an equation that we should be able to solve. So I'm going to complete the square on this. I don't think it factorizes, so I'm going to complete the square. So we've got mu take away 2 squared take away 4 plus 1 is going to be take away 3 is equal to 0 so we've got mu take away 2 squared is equal to 3 and we've got mu take away 2 is equal to plus or minus root 3 so mu is going to be equal to 2 plus or minus root 3 now because mu is my coefficient of friction, I, dis I can discount 2 plus root 3 because my coefficient of friction has to be between 0 and 1. So that means that the only solution for mu is going to be to take away root 3. And if I work that out as a decimal, I'm going to have uh, to take away root 3. Three, and that gives me 0 0.268 so mu is equal to 0 0.268 and that there is going to be my coefficient of friction um, both on the floor and on the um, cylinder as well ok I hope you found that useful thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you next time